Good morning. In today's meditation, I'm telling a story about how uh, I was approached recently uh, to talk more about my <clears throat> understanding of deep ecumenism. And I first began by telling the story that the word itself came to me in conversations with uh, Joanna Macy, a uh, Buddhist eco-activist, <clears throat> for telling me about deep ecology. And I felt, well, that's a wonderful phrase to adapt to ecumenism, because too much ecumenism at that time, uh, it's about 25 years ago, I guess, for me was people meeting, exchanging theological position papers at each other. And I was interested in something much deeper than that, the shared experience of spirituality and of action for social justice and so forth. But then as I reflected further on this question, I realized that uh, this book, which is a very early book for me, Western Spirituality, Historical Roots, Ecumenical Roots, which I edited, I gathered articles from many authors. Um, this was explicitly dealing with ecumenism too. So among the ecumenical articles, um, one was by Sister Jose Habde uh, on the, it's called the Seeking a Moist Heart, Native American Ways for Helping the Spirit. Then uh, Monica Helwig, uh, another woman theologian, talked about the gifts and insights from the Hasidism. But she herself was Christian, but she was speaking about the Hasidic tradition. James Kenney, who was very active in the World Parliament for many years, uh, offered a wonderful article on the um, development of a Russian spiritual vision, fullness and emptiness. And uh, I also had in the, in the book a marvelous article by Nicholas Berdayev, one of my favorite theologians, really, a Russian Orthodox theologian, called Salvation and Creativity, Two Understandings of Christianity. So his emphasis is very much on creativity, uh, a wonderful thinker. And there's an article here on the finest music in the world, exploring Celtic spiritual legacies, the Celtic tradition by Mary Eileen Schmiel. And uh, there was um, an article on yoga and the Western consciousness by Justin O'Brien, a very uh, committed yoga instructor and philosopher. <clears throat> and the spiritual insights of the American transcendentalist by a historian and Dominican, John Alexander. And Ronald Miller, a very fine uh, interfaith teacher, uh, wrote a very fine article on the spirituality of Franz Rosenfeig. Uh, Ronald Mil Miller had been a Jesuit for many years. Franz Rosenfeig, an important uh, Jewish thinker. And uh, Richard Woods wrote a very good article on William Ernest Hawking, Mysticism, Protestantism, and Ecumenism, Spiritual Theology of William Ernest Hawking. And uh, my article in here was on the fourfold path of pre spirituality as taught by Meister Eckhart. It was my first time I ever wrote about Eckhart or about the four, the four paths of pre spirituality. And my mentor, Pierre Chenu, had, uh, gave me permission to really combine two articles of his and translate them. We called it Body and Body Politic in Creation Spirituality of Thomas Aquinas. Dr. Rosemary Ruther offered a fine article on patristic spirituality and the experience of women in the patristic period of the church. Nyan Sabrino, a liberation theologian from South America, wrote about Christian prayer and New Testament theology, a basis for social justice and spirituality. And Helen Kenick, a, um, a biblical theologian, did her doctorate under um, Westerman uh, did a very fine article toward a biblical basis for Christian theology, where she lays out the themes in the Hebrew Bible, especially around uh, king, the kingship, and what it means in terms of responsibility for justice and uh, eco-justice and so forth. 
So my whole point is that the um, Rabbi Heschel says that, uh, uh, how does he put it? He says that our, the human soul is born with a past. The human soul is born with a past. And we have to discover that past in order to uh, create a fuller future. And the past uh, includes, of course, the lineages that we've inherited as a culture, as a community, or various communities. And that's important, but we don't want to stop there. We also want to do the, the mixing with the wisdom of the other communities of the world, the other cultures, the other religions. And I think this is coming to a crescendo today as we all face the extinction spasm and our, our own extinction as a species with the pressures of climate change and so much else. So I do think that the theme of deep ecumenism and ecumenism is something that all of us are asking about today and being called to respond in a thoughtful as well as an active way. Thank you, we'll see you tomorrow.